Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA uh, predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of a medieval Turkic nomad. So this is the sample DA94. It's a man. His mitochondrial DNA is Z1. I'm not sure where, where that's most typical today. Uh, it does not sound European to me. I'm familiar with U and H and T, which are European mitochondrial DNA. Z1 does not sound European to me. His um, paternal lineage is R1A M198. I think uh, M198 sort of precedes the um, Z645. I think it does. Uh, I think Z645 is the child clade of R. M198, so he could be RZ645, probably is, because um, most of the Indo-Iranian people who have R1A Z93 fall into the into the Z645 subclade. So he was probably just not tested for the specific variations that come after M198. He probably is M198, then Z645, then Z93. That's my assumption. Uh, where is he from? This is where he's from. Uh, this is the coordinates, uh, north, south, north and east, 52 degrees north, um, 76 degrees east. By the way, 52 degrees north is pretty far north, like, um, just for comparison, like, Paris is at 49 degrees north, so this individual is um, a couple hundred miles north of Paris. Um, I think it would be about the same latitude as London. Is it? Yeah, it should be about the same latitude as London. Let's see. Let's click on London. I can't see, but I, I think from what I remember, London is around 52 degrees north as well. Uh, it's a little bit south of Moscow because Moscow is 56, I think, degrees north. So uh, somewhere between Moscow and Paris in terms of the latitude. Let's see what he looked like, right? So this is his predicted phenotype with um, YSEC. And the problem with YSEC is that you see this prediction for eye color. It's completely bogus, completely stupid prediction. doesn't have any basis in reality. And... Um, the reason it's a stupid prediction is because he's not genotyped for this variation right here in BUH2. Uh, this is the main prediction, the, the main uh, variation that matters the most for eye color prediction. And he's not genotyped for this, so that's why they depict him uh, with sunglasses. They're not able to do any imputation. Uh, YSEC and HRS Plex, uh, the big shortcoming there is that it is not able to do imputations, unlike my tools, unlike my Nashakot, which is able to impute genotypes. So let's see uh, what he scores with my Nashakot. With Manasha code, he's got black hair color, uh, brown eye color, and snub-shaped nose. Now, we're going to see the reason why he's scoring um, brown eye color. And the reason he's scoring brown eye color is because none of this was found in the file, okay? None of this was, so he none of this is none of this stuff is actually found in the file. BH1 is not in the file, B this BH1, BH2 is not in the file, BH3 is not in the file, and he does not have BH4. So none of this is even found in the file. However, judging from the other genotypes he has in the OCA2 region, such as this, for example, or this, you can sort of come up with the um with the with the, the um with the idea that he probably does not have BH2. There's imputations that can be done here, even with the limited data that's in the file. And that's why he's predicted to have brown eyes with my tool. Um, does he have... He does not have a, a derived variance in SLC45A2. He does not have any derived variance in MC1R. And um, in my Nashakot results, uh, these numbers, they don't they don't matter. Like, these numbers don't matter at all for the for the uh, the percentages that come up with the result. Uh, these are just for me to look at and for me to uh, see what played a factor in the result. And the problem with these numbers is sometimes you see something like this, and I don't actually, if you see zeros, you don't always know if it's just because the individual doesn't have any light variance there, or if it's because it's simply returning the memory address. And... I sort of have a memory because it tends to it tends to be the same variations where it prints out the zero rather than numbers like this, right? So uh, it tends to be the same variations where it prints the memory address at zero, and this is one of them. So we're gonna actually actually look through his result with uh, uh, YSEC and determine whether this was just the printing of the memory address or if he really doesn't have any uh, light color variants here. And by the way, it doesn't matter either way. It doesn't matter because it doesn't play a role in the prediction. I just want to say right now in the prediction for this, it does doesn't um, completely not related to that. So um, okay, so he's not genotyped for this, right? So this is in this case, it doesn't mean he has uh, zero light color variants here. It, he's just it's just not in the file, right? So this is printing the memory address of the variable which I did not initialize. I probably should get around to initializing these variables. 
I mean, it's uh, it's like a it's a big deal, right? I mean, it, it would save me a lot of work uh, that I don't have to like look through every variable and see uh, look through every SNP and see if it's in the file and that's the prediction, or if it's simply not in the file. You know, it would make my life and making easier, uh, making videos a lot easier for me. But um, he's got black hair, snub shaped nose, and brown eyes. Does he have derived variance in EDAR? No. No derived variance in EDAR does not have EDAR. No, it does not have East Asian EDAR. Okay. Now we're going to look at his uh, ethnicity. So we're going to look at his results with um, G25 first. With G25, he's closest to Siberian Tatars, followed by Bashkirs, followed by Nagai. Um, he, it's a Turkic individual. I don't know if it's like a Kipchak or something. It could be a Kipchak, yeah, but it, he's uh, very Eastern, basically. Um, but not like not like Yakut Eastern, more like kind of like Northern Central Asian or Siberian. And he's getting more, uh, excuse me, he's getting modeled as a mixture of, well, this is a very stupid result. I'm, I'm going to have to actually um, reduce it to three, four populations to make it a little bit easier to understand. Okay, so he's getting modeled as a mixture of Shor plus Tajik plus Buryat plus Mari. Okay, so Shor uh, would be kind of like the original Turkic um, uh, origin Turkic admixture. Tajik would be kind of the Iranic admixture that Turkic people picked up along the way. Uh, Mari and Mari would probably fall in the same category as Tajik uh, because a lot of these like uh, these Sintash, no, not Sintashta, but these Sarmatians that preceded Turkic people in the steppe. Uh, they seem to get modeled as a mixture of like Finnish plus Tajik or some kind of Northeast European plus Tajik. So I'm guessing the Mari also comes from the same uh, from the same origin as the Tajik here. Comes from the Sarmatian or uh, Iranic admixture and Buryat. Uh, we can chalk that up to once again to uh, uh, Turkic or early Turkic admixture that was present in this individual. So this this individual is pretty much half um, half Turkic, half uh, Iranic in terms of admixture. Now this is what he scores with um, Eurogenes K30, K13, 32% Siberian, a lot of North Atlantic and Baltic, a lot of West Asian too, uh, not much East Asian here, and there is 6% South Asian here. Uh, do we see any West Mediterranean? No, there is no West Mediterranean, he's not scoring any West or East Mediterranean, he's only like Southern, <coughs> uh, he's only like Southern or Middle Eastern like admixture, it seems to be West Asian. Uh, which is scoring 13.5% off, and he's getting more as a mixture of Shores plus Scottish or Irish or English, uh, basically Shores plus one quarter, Shores plus one quarter, uh, Northwest European. Is this? Do we see this with um, G25? Not really. We don't really see this with G25. Hold on. What if I change it to three populations? We still don't really see this with G25. So this is the difference. Um, I guess I found a difference between the G25 results and the um, the Eurogenes K13 results because with G25 he's getting modeled as a mixture of Tubalar plus Tajik plus Mari whereas with um, Eurogenes K13 it's Shore which I guess is the same as Tubalar in terms of our Somo DNA plus actually Northwest Europeans so that, there's a difference here and um, there's short plus of okay maybe there isn't such a big of a difference when you look at the two-way population mode or three or four-way like here we see two-way short plus afghan turkmen which is not all that different from the g25 results here we also see uh short plus tajik plus norwegian plus event which is once again not all that different from the g25 results because there is tajik here uh okay i guess it's not that difficult uh, not that different if you look at the entire result but if you just look at the mix mode, it does look pretty different from G25. Now we'll be taking a look at his results with my trade predictor, which with my uh, genome analyzer tool, which is both on my GitHub and on my uh, website. So he, okay, he has GG here in Comet, which is um, typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia. He has TT in MAOA's RS6323, which means a worry year genotype higher dopamine levels and advantages in attention tasks. He's not genotyped for this variation here in COMT, so we can't really know whether he's a warrior or a warrior in COMT, but we do know that he's a warrior in MAOA. Um, he's got AA in this variation of DRD3, which means increased risk of autism and autistic personality traits. I don't quite understand how dopamine receptor D3 
has anything to do with autism, but, um, you know, I guess there is a link because because I did do some research and there is a link between these variations and autism. Uh, he's got TT here in DRD4, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to lower odds of intellectual disability in ADHD. Does not have any draft variants for European lactose persistence. Uh, not genotyped for anything in OXTR. And for diabetes, he's got CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in risk of type 1 diabetes. Does not have type 1 diabetes. Uh, now for micro P, I, I can't, for, for reasons, for monetization reasons, uh, I can't pronounce that. I would lose monetization. But he does not have micro P. No micro P, no micro P. And um, a less likelihood of weight gain of taking Zyprexa. Uh, less susceptibility to meth induced psychosis. Probably shouldn't smoke meth anyway, despite having less susceptibility to meth induced psychosis. Um, for albinism and atypical traits panel, not a carrier for albinism type 2. Does not have any tyrosinase negative ob acutaneous albinism mutations here, and not a carrier of Melanesian blonde hair variants. So, um, you know, not albino. The, nothing atypical is in this file. And um, now we're going to check his polygenic risk scores. For the polygenic risk scores, he's got a pretty much average odds of schizophrenia for Northern Europeans, uh, below average than what's typical for Sub Saharan Africans, but very average for Europeans. He's got a high odds of diabetes, and he's got pretty much average odds of Alzheimer's. Why is the odds of diabetes so high? Um, not every variation that's used in the calculation is shown on the screen, but we should be able to figure it out just by looking at what's on the screen right now. So what's on the screen right now is only this one variant for higher odds of type 2 diabetes, and this one, slight decrease in risk of type, 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes. So we can't really know from what's on the screen why the score is like this, but... Should I, you know, tell me, should I add, should I add all these variants, like, um, on the polygenic risk scores page so that you could see what caused your result to be the way it is? You tell me. That's pretty much all there is to say about this individual. Thanks for watching my video until the end. Uh, you can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. And, uh, goodbye guys.